In the previous video, we saw how to encode a system of simultaneous linear equations like this one, x minus y, x minus 1, x plus y equals 3, into an augmented matrix, in this case 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, 3, with a vertical bar separating the 2 by 2 block on the left from the column vector on the right. And we saw how if you manipulate these equations, that corresponds to performing row operations on the augmented matrix. And the idea in solving the system of equations was to try and simplify the augmented matrix. And at some point we obtained 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2 as our augmented matrix. And if you see what that what system of equations that corresponds to, it's uh, x no y's equals 1 and no x's y equals 2. So we can say we've solved the system of equations. So if you get to a point with your operations where the, um, the matrix to the left of the vertical bar is in this form, so it's the identity, uh, then you can say you've solved your system of equations. But you can't always do that, and um, the aim of this lecture is to see what we should aim for instead of the identity here. The best thing you can aim for is for this matrix to the left-hand side of the vertical bar to be in something called reduced echelon form. So before we talk about that, I'm going to talk about echelon form. And before we talk about that, I'm going to have to tell you about leading entries. So definition. Given a matrix, um, I'm just going to give you an example to think of. So um, 0, 5, 0, 3, 2, it's going to be an augmented matrix, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 7, 1, 3, 4, minus 1. So given a matrix and a row of this matrix, um, the leading entry this row is the leftmost non-zero entry left of the bar. So if it's not an augmented matrix and you just talk about ordinary matrices, you just ignore this left of the bar thing. Okay, um, so for example in this top row the leading entry is 5. It's the leftmost non-zero entry left of the bar. In the second row none of the entries left of the bar as a non-zero so there is no leading entry. So if the row is a zero row, then uh, there is no leading entry. So to make this uh, a proper definition, I should say a non-zero row. And what's the th leading entry in the third row? It's seven. That's the leftmost non-zero entry left of the bar. Now, we want our matrix to the left of the bar to look like the identity matrix as far as it possibly can. So let's see what are the leading entries the identity matrix. Let's just do the 3 by 3 identity matrix. The leading entries are 1, 1, 1. And 1, 1. the position of the leading entries is top left and then it moves diagonally down to the bottom right. So an echelon form matrix or a matrix in echelon form is going to be one where the leading entries move to the right. 
so definition a matrix is in echelon form if well first of all I need to tell you uh, what to do about these rows of zeros so let's stick them all at the bottom so we have all zero rows uh, are at the bottom and um, the leading entries move to the right as you go down and I should say strictly to the right right they're not allowed to stay sort of stacked on top of one another they have to go strictly to the right as you go down the rows so just looking up at this example uh, that we had um, this is very very far from being an echelon form for one thing it's got a row of zeros in the middle so it violates this first condition and for another thing the leading entries move to the left so um, that's definitely not an echelon form so this is not in echelon form whereas the identity matrix is there are no zero rows so this condition is empty it's trivially satisfied and the leading entries move to the right another example of something that is in echelon form let's say one two three zero zero two zero 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 okay the leading entries are one and two this one and this two and they're moving to the right and all the zero rows well there's only one in this case it's at the bottom you could have more zero rows as long as they're all kind of stacked up at the bottom so the reason for the word echelon is that when you have a matrix in this form you can see the, there's like a staircase of zeros at the bottom and that's the sort of characteristic sign that you're looking at an echelon matrix for a matrix in echelon form and the word echelon comes from the French word echelle meaning stairs um, so here's an example of something that's not in echelon form it's not in echelon form because the leading entries 3 and 4 are not moving to the right they're staying put they're staying in that first column and they should be moving to the right so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a bunch of matrices and you're going to tell me whether they're in echelon form or not and then I'll confirm for you so here you go here's the definition of echelon in case you've forgotten it already um, and here are six matrices which of them are in echelon form so I'm going to tell you the answer now so you can pause the video and think about it if you want so the first one is in echelon form because the leading entries 1 1 1 are moving to the right second one oh and there's no zero rows so the second one again there's no zero rows the leading entries are one and then well we don't need to check if it's moving to the right because there's there's no further rows so this is also in echelon form in the third example this is in echelon form because the entries are leading entries are one one they're moving to the right in this fourth example 
it's not in echelon form because we have a one and a two directly above one another those are the leading entries so the uh, they're not moving to the right this guy it, it is moving to the right it's three two and then the final row is a row of zeros which is okay and in this final example it's not because the leading entries are moving to the left okay in the next video we're going to talk about reduced echelon form